Hey kids, it's me again. In this video, I'm going to discuss another measure of interest, which is the effective rate of discount. Okay, are you ready? Okay, let's start. So for the effective rate of discount, we're going to use the lowercase letter D. Okay, so to be able to relate this effective rate of discount D to our discount factor V, and eventually, we can relate um, this effective rate of discount D to our effective rate of interest um, I. Okay? So, we're going to deal with two scenarios. Okay? So, let's have the first scenario. Okay? Investing. Ito medyo familiar na sa inyo. Here. How much should you invest today to get one unit after one year? Diba? So, magkano ang ilalagay mong pera sa investment ngayon para may one unit ka after one year? So, this is the time diagram. So, it's like um, asking for the present value. So, how do we get the present value of one unit? What are we going to multiply? Okay? We multiply one unit by the discount factor. That's V. Okay? So, here. The present value of one unit is equal to 1 times V, okay? Raised to 1. Kasi 1 year lang naman yung investment period, okay? So that is our first scenario. You are an investor. So you want to know how much should you invest today so that you'll have one unit after one year. And then, please remember, ha, the present value of one unit is... 1 times V. Okay? Uh, let's have the second scenario. This time, you are a borrower. Okay? So, this is the scenario. How much will you get if you borrow one unit from a bank for one year with D as the effective rate of discount? Okay? So, ganito yon. If you borrow 1 million from a bank or from a lending institution, Hindi 1 million ang makukuha mo. It is always less than 1 million. Why? Because the lending institution or the bank gets the um, advanced interest payment. Okay? Kaya mas mababa na sa 1 million ang makukuha mo. Okay? So, ganun din dito. So, since we have D as the effective rate of discount, ang marireceive mo today, okay, at this very moment is 1 minus D. Okay? Pero ang babayaran mo after 1 year, okay, is 1 unit. Kasi 1 unit naman talaga yung hiniram mo. Okay? So, the time diagram looks like this. Okay? So, you have 1 minus D at time 0, and then you're going to pay 1 unit at time 1. Okay? So, it's very clear from this time diagram the present value of one unit is 1 minus D, right? Here, okay? Pero can you still recall sa scenario 1, anong present value ng 1 natin? It is 1 times V, right? So that's why from scenarios 1 and 2, we have this. Okay? Equal sila kasi ito ay present value ni 1 unit. Ito rin, present value ni ito ni 1 unit. So, in this way, we were able to relate the discount factor V and the effective rate of discount. So, please always remember this relationship. Mahalaga ito. Okay? So, let me write again. Your 1 minus D is equal to V. Since we have this relationship, we can relate now this discount rate, okay, the effective rate of discount D, to our effective rate of interest, I. Kasi, saan ba equal ang V in terms of I? It is equal to 1 plus I raised to negative 1 or 1 over 1 plus I. So, see, we were able to relate this 3. Okay? So, please remember this relationship. Okay? Now, let's have this para mas maalala nyo pa yung mga relationships. Okay, so I have here two time diagrams. Okay, so dito, sa unang diagram, okay, 
you have one unit at time zero and you want to get its value at time one. Okay, so that's carrying one unit forward. So that process is accumulating, okay? So you're going to get the accumulated value of one unit here. Okay, now ito naman, may one unit ka dito sa future, one year from now or one period from now, you want to get its value at this point. So you're carrying one unit backward, okay? This process is this counting, okay? So ganun lang. So wag kayong malilito sa dalawang process na ito. If you are carrying a certain amount forward, that's accumulating. So you use the accumulation function, okay? If it's not stated, you use the compound interest rate assumption. So your accumulation function is 1 plus i raised to t, okay? But if the process is discounting, so ibig sabihin you're carrying a certain amount backward, you're going to use the discount function, your V of T, okay? Which is equal to V to the T, all right? Okay, let's have more notes here, okay? So number one, for a constant effective rate of interest I, D is equal to I over 1 plus I. Okay, ito. Gagamitin natin ito. So, please memorize this. Or you may want to prove this. Okay? Totoo ba na ang D is equal to I over 1 plus I? Okay? If you want to prove this, balikan nyo yung relationship ng D at saka ng V. Diba? Um, 1 minus D is equal to V. Okay? And then you try to write V in terms of I. Okay, and then you can show that D is really equal to this expression. Let's have the second note. Okay, let's get the accumulated value of one unit at time T. Okay, so parang imagine mo tong time diagram na ito, tas gawin mo lang tong T. Okay, how are you going to accumulate this one unit here? What are you going to multiply? You multiply this by the accumulation function. So that's 1 times A of T. Okay? E saan ba equal ang A of T? It's automatically assumed ha, na compound interest rate ang gagamitin. So it's 1 plus I raised to T. Okay? So, hindi ko na sinulat yung 1 dito ito. Hindi ko na sinulat to. Okay? And then, we know that 1 plus I is equal to V to the negative 1. So that's why this 1 plus i raised to t is equal to v to the negative t. Okay? And then we know that v is equal to 1 minus d. So that's why we have this. Okay? So ito para masanay kayo sa relationship ng i, ng v, at saka ng d. Okay? Let's have the third note. Let's get naman the present value of 1 to time 0. So, pwede nyo i-consider ang time diagram na ito. And then, palitan nyo lang ito ng T. Okay? So, how are you going to get the present value of 1 unit to time 0? So, you multiply 1 by V to the T. Ito yun. Okay? 1 times V to the T. Okay? But we all know that V is equal to 1 plus I raised to negative 1. So, V to the T is equal to 1 plus I raised to negative T. Okay? Also, your V is equal to 1 minus D. Right? So, that's why V to the T is equal to 1 minus D raised to T. Okay? So, ganyan. So, kailangan alam nyo yan by heart. Kasi gagamitin natin sila. Okay? So, let's have one example here. Kit and Kat. Each open new bank accounts at time zero. Okay? Kit deposits 100 into his bank account. Pero si Kat, 50 lang ang dineposit niya. Okay? Each account earns an annual effective discount rate, D. So pareho ang interest rate ng accounts nila. The amount of interest earned in Kit's account during the 11th year is X, and it is 
equal to the amount of interest earned in Kat's account during the 17th year. Okay, we're asked to find X and D. In this problem, you should be able to reason out bakit magkaiba pang year, okay, mag equal yung amount of interest earned ng mga accounts nila. Okay, because kahit paraho yung effective discount rate ng accounts nila, magkaiba naman yung amount na dineposit nila. Okay, that's the reason why. Okay, so before we answer the problem, let me show you another way on how to get the amount of interest. Okay, kasi ito yung usual na alam natin, right? It's A of N minus A of N minus 1, right? We get the difference of the two consecutive accumulated values. Okay, at ito yung nth year. Okay, so kumbaga um, 11th year, so ito yung 10, ito 11. So we know that we can relate capital A to small a, right? Capital A of N is equal to K times small a of N. But what is our small a of N? It is 1 plus I raised to N, okay? Compound interest rate assumption is used. Okay, so that's why we have this, okay? This is our accumulation function, ito rin. And then... We factor out k times 1 plus i raised to n minus 1. Okay? And then we have this. Okay? Tapos siya na. Magka-cancel yung 1 dito. Okay? And then you only have i here. And what is k times 1 plus i raised to n minus 1? This is exactly your capital A of n minus 1. So you only have this expression. Ito o. Okay? So to get the amount of interest during the nth period or nth year, all you have to do is to get the accumulated value of the previous period and then multiply it by i. But if you can't remember this, you can always use our basic formula in getting the amount of interest. It is a of n minus a of n minus 1. Okay? But for this problem, I'm going to use this. Okay? So to get i of n, I'm going to use A of N minus 1 times I. Okay? So we have this. So si Kit. Okay? Kit deposited 100. Okay? And then we're going to get um, the amount of interest earned during the 11th year. So using our um, previously derived formula, we have A of 10 times I. Okay? Using the compound interest rate assumption, we have 100 times 1 plus i raised to 10 times i. Okay? So I hope this is clear. Okay? Now, what about for cat? Okay? Ito naman yung kay cat. We're going to get the amount of interest during the 17th year. Okay? So we have a of 16 times i. Okay? So 50 is the initial amount of investment. Okay? times 1 plus i raised to 16 times i, okay? Now, we know that the amount of interest earned in kids fund during the 11th year is the same as the amount of interest earned in cats fund during the 17th year. So that's why we have this. Tapos, is a substitute lang natin to at saka ito, okay? So please do it, okay? And you're going to have this value for i. Please notice that I did not round off this i to four decimal places yet. Because hindi ito yung final answer. Hindi ito yung hinahanap natin. We're looking for d. Okay? And it's safe to write answers with more than four decimal places. Okay? So what is d? Okay? So solve it. Okay? You may want to recall D is equal to I over 1 plus I. Yung note number 1 natin kanina. Okay? And you will get this value for D. Okay? Also, we get the value for X. What is X? That is the amount of interest in kids' account during the 11th year. Okay? Or X is also the amount of interest in cuts account during the 
17 year. Okay, they will give you the same value. Okay, so you should be getting this amount. Please double check this numerical value. Rounded off to four decimal places. Okay, so I think that's it. I hope you learned something from this video. See you in my next video.